hello everyone so in this video I am going to be talking about JSON path uh, especially I'm going to be explaining how you can use this JSON path with kubectl commands uh, it's a small topic but it can come in handy uh, when you're troubleshooting when you're investigating some uh, you know some issue so yeah, let's uh, let's get started with uh, a small example. So first of all, let's say like you have like a, a pod which has multiple containers, right? So for that, actually in my uh, in my cluster, when my Kubernetes cluster, I'm actually going to be creating a pod with a couple of containers. So let's create this pod, and I have a simple manifest file. Uh, with a couple of containers and you know it has uh, one is based on busybox image the other one is based on nginx image and the name of the pod is pod actually okay so I'm gonna go ahead and create it okay so and let's see actually if the containers are running so both of them are running so two out of two containers in this pod are running Okay, so now let's see actually how we can use JSON path. Now, first of all, when you do um, a, when you run a command like kubectl get pod, uh, you can also do a wide output. So that will give you some extra information like IP and then which node it is running on, etc., etc. So but there are a lot more details that you can actually find out using uh, this command actually like so when I did like a minus O or dash O JSON so it actually uh, gave a, a comprehensive output actually right so and this one if you see it's basically uh, JSON formatted of course that's what we asked for we can also do uh, minus o yaml so that's actually uh, the yaml formatted output right but this one's about json path so let's uh, explore that json output so <clears throat> again this one's actually huge output right so sometimes actually when you're working with um, uh, production pods pods that are used by your applications or services uh, they are probably going to have three four five containers so the output is going to be really long and it can be really confusing to actually kind of read this output so that's where actually we can use json path like for example like if i just want to like i don't know what this um what this service is like i'm just logging into my production box uh, my production Kubernetes cluster and I want to know what containers are part of this pod actually so one simple command that you can run is basically a kub kubectl log actually like if I just do a kubectl log and then the name of the pod logs and name of the pod uh, that actually kind of prompts you to choose a particular container like here the names of the containers are container 1 and container 2 so that's what it is showing actually it says like it a, a specific container must be specified right so it says like choose one among these but this is a shortcut to actually find the containers that are part of a pod okay but i want to use json json path right so what i will do is uh, i'll do a get pod and then I'll do a minus O and instead of um, JSON formatted output I'm going to do equals JSON path and I'm going to put a single quote open and close single quote and in between that I'm actually going to write a um, sort of like a query actually if you look at the JSON output um, and I'll do a pipe more 
you can see like all the fields the key value pairs that this output contains so it's got api version it's got a bunch of items right and then under items you have the metadata kind spec and volumes tolerations there's a lot of details actually right and the same thing repeats for the other container as well and there's a st status and there's a container status and there's like the state of the con you know the state of the container itself the container ip etc right so what i'm going to do is uh i'm going to do minus o json path equals single quote open close and then these braces and i am actually going to be looking at only items to start with right now we have extracted only the items uh, section of this json output actually right so now the next thing is you can actually narrow down even more so let's say like we want to find the container names the containers that are part of this pod so first of all items is actually uh, an array so if you want to get the first item in the array then you can do a zero that's the index and then i can do a um, spec right because that's how the json is uh, structured right so this is the spec from the first item of the json output actually of this command right and i want to let's say get the container name then i have to drill down a little bit further like i'm going to basically um, look for so that's not that didn't work so let's say spec and then we are if you have like jq installed so that actually prettifies the output unfortunately the whenever you use json path the output is not actually like pretty so you can use jq in combination with that now this tells me clearly like how it is um how the the key value pairs are actually so under spec there is another um another another uh, key called containers and then within that you have uh, the names actually right so what you can do is um, you can do containers so now that gets you the container array and then on top of that you want to get the no container is an array so i want to get let's say all the containers of this pod and and i can actually go for the name right name is part of the container right so what i can do is dot name now this should actually give me the names of all the containers you can see the names are the containers are container 1 and container 2 and if you want to cross check that with uh, the yaml file you can see that right so you we basically got the same thing from the kubectl command right so so that's that but again this output like container 1 and container 2 and then immediately it's followed by the the next prompt right of the shell so this is not pretty at all so if you want to list it out right then you can actually sort of like loop through uh, or iterate through the the output the way you can do that is by using range command actually right you can use range for this particular uh, key so containers is basically an array right so 
range will basically it's like a for loop that goes through all the items in this array right now inside this output like the you take all the the items in the array and then you need to like let me show you actually so this is basically the array right so now this is one item and this is the second item now let's say like we want to get again just the name from this item and then we go through the second iteration of the for loop and then we get this name right so basically we want to just get the name from that from that actually so what we can do is we can you see the first braces contains the the array and this one actually we can just do a name dot name and then finally end okay now actually it it listed the names of the containers again but again the format is not any different and that's because we haven't introduced any um uh we haven't introduced any like uh, formatting fields actually formatting strings so for this we can actually add something like a new line after the name then that should give you the names of the containers right in 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 this like sort of like pretty output right output format so what else can we do now this also enables you to like basically get other fields uh, for example if you want to get the images that are being used for each of these containers then you can do the same thing you can do a dot image right because image is also part of the the elements in the array so you can do a dot image and and then if you see the image is like now uh, printed along with the container name but we want to live uh, we want to give some space right so so either actually you can do uh, just a space that's fine or you can use the slash t which is like a tab uh, space actually between the the container name and the image name so you you can see like how you can basically like grab things from this output um, by using the the json path query so let me share let me show you a couple of more things so sometimes actually you will have like container issues like um, if you have when you have multiple containers inside a pod maybe one of the containers uh, is having issues so let's actually like reproduce that that kind of situation so i'm going to go into my pod yaml and i'm going to just modify something actually like introduce a typo or something like that right and that should actually uh, mess up one of the pods so i'm going to actually delete a pod uh, this pod that i just created okay so now we can actually create this pod again but this time remember we introduced a typo in the command that runs in one of the containers so when we try to actually look at the output the status of the pod you can see that only one out of two containers or uh, one out of two is actually running right so basically there is a there's an issue so now you want to investigate like what's going on uh, you know what's going on with this pod which container is having issue and so on so we can use the same thing but we can let's say let's start with the items as usual and you can just grab all the items in the output and then under that under the items you can actually get status so basically now we are getting the status of um, 
status section alone status value alone from the from the output actually like if you you if you have like jq then you can pretty pretty fi it so now again you have a bunch of things in the in the status right so let's actually get only the container statuses alone in this output so now you can see that you know the first container is basically having the, the last state that uh, key this field is actually showing you like what issue is there in this container and then basically container one is doing a crash loop uh, loop back off okay so and then container two is fine container one is having issues and what issue do we have if you look at the last state and terminated field the message is basically uh, the starting container process caused uh, basically this error actually so basically it doesn't know what sleep SLE command is like we introduced the typo so that's kind of expected so that's how actually you kind of look at um, you know the containers and like you know their their uh, respect to errors that's how actually you do some investigation like when it comes down to it actually